Good. It's Mother's Day. Hola! It's Cinco de Mayo. Cinco de Mayo. Oh. Hola, que pasa ahí? Come on in. For all my Spanish constituents. Hello, hello, everyone. We'll give everyone a couple minutes here to log on and get us going here. Uh, if you are already on and you see us, please do us a favor and go ahead and hit the share button. Let the world know that we are out there and that we are on live tonight. I'm sharing. You're sharing. We'll get these out there. Um, hey, Greg. Hey, Kara. We got a bunch of people logging on. Let's see here. Whoops. Sorry, I'll turn that down. Aha, I got an Ola. Good. Come on in, come on in, come on in. We're getting some people in here. We normally start right about this time, so we'll let everybody log on. And if you have the chance, we've already said it once, but we'll keep saying it another few times, go ahead and share if you can. Um, share the post, share it into the groups, wherever you can share it right now, and uh, get that out there. So we'll have some people on here. I see. Hey, everyone. Hey, hey Ron. Hey, Ron. Ron. Hey, hey. Good to see you guys. Hey, Bri. Good evening, everyone. All right. We got some more that we're sharing it to tonight. So we'll just keep getting that going if here. If you just signed on, go ahead and share with three people. Three? Why not five? Okay, do five. Okay, five sounds good. Cinco. Five. Cinco. In honor of Cinco de Mayo, go ahead and share it with five different people. Hey, Ben. How and are you? we'll share those throughout, but we're getting those sent out now. It's good to see everyone. I'm just checking some people in here. Your dreads are looking good, PT. My dreads are looking good. Who who hit up that? <laughs> Righty. Because that's for real. Um... Yeah, people uh, people are all worried about their haircuts and everything else. Hi, Mark Bonneau. Um I lived with very, very long hair for many, many, many years. Some of the people that are on this post, one just logged on. Um, yes, I can see you. It's like Hatchie Malachi, I can see you. But um, for some that are on here, you remember me back in my day. My hair was down to here. And this part, here's the funny thing. My hair was down to here, but this part was probably about this high. He had like the fl oh, kind of man. flip going on. <laughs> it's called the feather. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay? Jeez. I mean, don't be an amateur. It wasn't Farrah Fawcett. I was way past that those days. It was 80s hair rock, and I used more Aquanet than you could ever purchase. If my parents purchased stock, they would be millionaires today. I used two things. Moose. And Aquanet. And believe it or not, when my hair got this long, I looked in the mirror and thought, man, what I could do for an old can of moose right now. It'd be nice and fluffy. Mm. Amen. I'll be taking those shears out. <laughs> Him and Cooper. Oh, look. Oh. I got a new gift today. I could cut my hair with this. Have you seen those guys? They like... I'm going to shave like this. Ugh. Don't turn too bright. I was shaving. Huh? I know people are watching. I was shaving. shaving. My goodness. I was shaving. But thank you to a very special person uh, gifted us today. Uh, so that's that's good. All right. Come on in. I hope you're in here. Again, we will say it. Happy Cinco de Mayo. Uh, Como esta? For all of you that are out there. Hola. All the above. Gloria a Dios. Gloria a Dios. Yes. yes. Hallelujah. Or hallelujah. Zomita. Uh, we love Zomita. Um, a fellow sister of ours, she uh, she was Spanish to the core, and she would say, Hallelujah. And it was great. But anyway, uh, but we're so glad that you're here. We uh, are getting together again on our Tuesday night here online to come to you live. Uh, we are still not back in the building yet. Obviously, I will talk about that in a second. But we are so thankful that all of you are on here with us together coming together. Um, I was uh, talking to someone today and I said a very great thing about um, all of you that are online, all of our church family, uh, not only connect, but even beyond that, that we know of. 
Um, we're not we're not sitting there uh, saying, man, I wish that we could get some word. Man, I wish that we could have some church. We want to have church because we want to be back together. We want to be seeing each other and hugging each other and loving on each other and together in one place. I think that that's our goal. Um, I'm so proud and happy that we're all staying fed. We're all staying uh, in the word. We're all staying together online. We're coming together for everything from Sunday service to Tuesday online to Thursday trivia. We're, we're connecting together and that's a great thing. So we're all happy about that. Um, but I know that we want to get back together and see each other. And uh, But this week, we are still, uh, this Thursday, so two nights from tonight, Thursday night, we are going to have prayer here online at 6.30. So that's what we're going to do. So a lot of us have talked about it. We normally have our trivia on Thursday, and Thursday trivia is a great time. We have a blast on Thursday mm -hmm. trivia. Um, but we Thursday is National Day of Prayer, and so we are going to honor uh, our National Day of Prayer. You know, I think that we we can take those stances to be against the government or with, and this is one time we're with, right? Um, it is a National Day of Prayer, and so we are going to stop uh, and pray. And during that time from 6.30, uh, at 6.30 we'll start. We're going to pray for the nation. We're going to come on right. here. We're going to pray together as as a family. Uh, we hope that you can join us wherever you are uh, and and pray here online. So that'll be Thursday night. And then, then back in here on Sunday. What time? 10.10. Sunday at 10.10. Um, Sunday at 10.10. We're going to be back in here online. And um, I'm seeing everybody pop up. Thank you for keeping them. That's what my wife does for me. Um, Sunday at 1010, we will be back on here. We'll be on here and on YouTube on Sunday. And so we're continuing, like I said, to do some great things for um, your viewing experience to better it. We're doing everything from uh, cameras to right. the sound to the computers. All of those things are coming together and we're extremely, extremely blessed uh, to, to be in that place. But also Sunday is a very special day. Do you know why? Because mm -hmm. it's Sunday. Amen. Because it's Mother's Day. <laughs> Sunday is Mother's Day. So here's a warning now. Bing, 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 bing. Because Amazon is probably not going to get it here. Well, you, they would if you would have ordered it today or t tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Yesterday. No. You're, you haven't been ordering on Amazon, but unless it's essential. Oh. Amazon stuff, please. I mean, I can order you food and it can be here. Anyway. That means he did it. <laughs> so Sunday is Mother's Day and we hope that you're going to celebrate. We hope that you're going to be able to, uh, in some way, honor your mother. Um, like I say all the time, uh, even if you have a little bit of a strange relationship with your mother, uh, reach out to her and thank her because it's because of her that you are here. Whether you had a great childhood or whether you had a rocky childhood, um, you need your mother to be here today. And so you should give her thanks for for just the fact that she was able to give you birth and give you life. You know, I've, I've learned throughout um, our time and, and dealing with some people who were given up for adoption at birth and who later on found out that their mother was there. Um, most of them do not have the resentment that you would think because, you know, it does take a choice. And so we are thankful for all of those mothers um, who were actively part of our lives mm -hmm. or who at least gave us birth and gave us a chance to be here today because they're one of the reasons that we're able to make it to heaven because we were yeah. able to be birthed. We're able to breathe, and we're able to know who Jesus Christ is. So we are so thankful for that. So that's going to be this Sunday. We normally do a uh, a lot of stuff, so it's going to be really hard for us Sunday because we normally do um, some giveaways, and we do some different things, and we're going to be working on something. Old Timmy's going to pull something out of, his, out of the trick bag, amen? And so we're going to figure something out to honor the mothers that are with us. And here's a great thing, okay? 
So if it was any other time and we had Mother's Day service, you would try to invite your mother to church with you. Do the same thing. Let her know that we're going to be online. We're going to be there. And because we are going to honor the mothers, I think that they're very important. Um, I love my mom to death, as you know. Um, I am her favorite son, as you know. Um, I, I was first in the birth, and I was first for everything else, so I'm just number one. Uh, Aaron, you're hilarious. My brother's not watching, so um, so I'm number one. And uh, But we are so thankful for our mothers, we're going to honor them on Sunday. Yes, and it please... Send me videos if you want to tell me why your mother is special to you. I would love for you to share that with me. I have two very special mothers. I have a mother-in-law. I call her my male. She's in there. And um, my mom, who was, has been a great mother, and they are great women of God, and they deserve to be honored. And please, send me a picture of you and your mom. We'll try to post it on the page. Oh, there you go. Yeah, anything that you can do. We would just love to share that day with you. It's going to be a tough day because I'm so used to being able to honor all of you. So um, please prepare. Have your mother with you. Make sure she feels special. Make sure husbands, your wife feels special if she birthed your children and raised your children and nurtured your children and loved your children. And... Um, Make sure you take some time for that day. It's very special. So that's going to be Sunday. So then I just want to make a quick announcement before we go into the Word. Um, I want to talk about our uh, opening and opening back up physically in the physical building. So um, we have a lot of different guidelines. And for those of you that know, we are obviously in the state of Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. Some states are fully open. Some are not. Um, some people are having church regardless of what's going on. Um, some are not. I'm not uh, drawing lines to either side. Um, I do not think that it should be, I try to stay quiet, but I can't. I don't think that it should be a show, right? I don't think that, that it should be a show that we're having church or not having church. Um, we made the judgment call. We made the judgment call based on our congregation, okay, right? Like, if we have a snowstorm in Pennsylvania, I wouldn't make Florida cancel service, and vice versa. If they have a uh, hurricane blowing through and they cancel service, we wouldn't cancel service up here. So it's based on our congregation, based on the people that are there, based on um, the workforce for our congregation. We have a uh, large number of uh, first responders in the hospitals working in the COVID units right now. And um, so we made the decision that we were going to take a break for a time period. However, that break is done. That break is mm -hmm. over. Um, I'm not looking right now. I'm getting thumbs up. Um, I am not looking for ways to figure out how we're going to make it longer in this quarantine. I am looking for ways for us to open, okay? So I just want you to know that and when I say I, I mean we as the church. And, and um, we have been on phone calls with other pastors from churches here in Pennsylvania to churches outside of the state to large churches. We're so thankful for um, the connections that we have there through ARC um, and Grow Leadership and different places that we've been able to be connected with and um, a lot of insight. <clears throat> we don't want to open up in the in the way where we have masks on and yellow tape making sure people come in one way and out the other that's just not who we are that's not our makeup um, so we are going to do everything we can over the next few weeks to limit um, the restrictions not only limiting the restrictions but we're also putting some different things well we have um, some cleanings coming in so cleaning crews coming in to make sure that the building is 100% set up and sanitized. Uh, we are taking some other precautions that are going to do it. Our welcome team and our team for our church are going to be there, and they're going to help with directing people wherever. And here's the facts. If you're um, susceptible to these things or you are on a scale where you are having issues, then number one, you may need to stay home a little bit longer, or number two, wear a mask. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a large enough sanctuary. Thank you, Jesus. We have a large enough sanctuary that we can pack the house um, and and not fill up. And you know what? If we get so full that we um, are 
on the verge of having issues uh, with meeting, then guess what? We'll go to two services. So we're 100%, um, we're 100% cool with that. So we're going to do everything that we can. I need you to do one thing first. I need you to pray. I need you to pray that our leadership, hey, Tommy, um, I think we need uh, you to pray for our leadership, that our leadership will make the right decision on the date that we are going to open up. So we want to open up. Please be in prayer about that. Right. We want to open up with as little restrictions as possible to make sure that our worship experience and our church experience is not vastly different. Mm -hmm. We do have to take into account that we do have children there. And if they see a totally different uh, environment, it could affect them. And we do not ever want to do that. I, I always want church to be the place that our kids go to and feel the most comfortable in. In their life. I've always felt very comfortable in church myself. Um, I've never felt out of place at church and uh, that's probably not totally true but some most churches um, and we don't want that. We want to do that as well. So please pray. We are going to meet with our leaders. We are going to go over a plan put in place and so um, I need you to pray. Mm -hmm. We also need some volunteers so if you have some time in the next two weeks um, go ahead and message pastor uh, or m private message the church. Let us know. We will be doing everything from getting our grounds ready outside to getting the um, space inside ready. So we have a lot of moving pieces. A lot of things are coming together. So we are going to do that. And um, so we do need some volunteers uh, for things like that. And we are making sure that they'll just be small groups in there. And again, the facility is large enough that we can work in different areas and it not bother anybody. Um, and then one more thing before we go into the word is I need you to start thinking about and start inviting people, mm -hmm. right? We're going to open our doors. We're not opening our doors just so that we can come back together and so that we can just be together for ourselves. We're coming back because our purpose is to spread the love of Jesus Christ. We exist, right? The, 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 the whole creation of connect is because we exist to connect with each other, connect with people, right? Connect people to God and become followers together. So that's our goal. Uh, my goal is to connect with someone, to connect them with Jesus Christ and for us to become followers together. That's why we exist. And so when we open up our doors, we are going to be doing the same thing. We are not opening up our doors just so we could be back together. Right. We are opening up our doors so that we can connect with people, so that we can connect people to Christ and become followers together. And give me a thumbs up and an amen if you got it. Thank you for everyone that's on here again. Um, I'm going to go into the Word. And uh, why don't you pray before we begin? I'm going to make you pray. Sure. Um, I just wanted to say, too, really quick, that we are just so thankful for each of you who come online every week and support um, the ministry as far as um, just coming online and let us knowing that you are there. And I know many people are becoming weary. I understand that. And um, we are encouraging you to stay in the Word, to dig deeper. And we just want to say thank you to all of the guests who join us and um, welcome to Connect and you are part of our online church and we are really thankful for you but lord we just come to you right now and we ask that you just anoint this service tonight lord god um please teach us to hear your word but not only to hear your word lord but to do your word god we just thank you for your goodness and we thank you for your mercy we thank you for your love your kindness and your goodness to us lord and we just give thanks unto you, Lord, because you are worthy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And everybody say amen. So today is Tuesday, which you know because you're here uh, at our worship service. But today is also, for those of you that know out there, today is Giving Tuesday. So um, normally there's a little bit more activity around Giving Tuesday. Um, Giving Tuesday has been created because... Uh, for online groups, um, I saw one today, a great group that's out there called Surfers for Autism, um, SFA, and um, they have events every year. This was a surfing thing in Florida. Um, they have events every year, and they put them on, and they were online today. Other companies, 
um, that are nonprofit, uh, you know, reaching out to people because this is a good time for, uh, for people to give on Giving Tuesday. And I thought about it today, and uh, it was funny because I had received a call from somebody, um, and they said, hey, uh, we have something for you and your wife. It'll be here Tuesday. I said, oh, okay, great. Um, and then they said, oh, no, it'll be here Wednesday. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, then it ended up coming in today. And it just all kind of played into Giving Tuesday. And I already showed you at the beginning. My new, <laughs> my new razor for cutting. Amen. I'm so excited. Um, anyway. Um, and so, sorry, that bad boy's heavy. Um, and so I'm so excited. So it was a great reminder. But I wanted to talk about giving for a second. And um, don't. Don't log off. Don't, 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 don't log off. I was just kidding. That was freezing. Um, one of the things about when we go back to live church is I wonder how many people are going to try to pause me during service. <laughs> anyway. Okay. But I'm not going to talk about the giving in the way that you think. I'm not here to sit there and ask for you for donations. Um, but if you'd like to give something, we're here. Uh, you know, I always joke around and say that the water is free, meaning the lesson and meaning what God is and his gospel is free, but somebody has to pay for all the piping and everything else. I got that from uh, Pastor Mark Kennecott many years ago. And But I want to talk about giving in the heart manner, in who we are. And I want to read this scripture. So 1 Corinthians 13, 1 through 3 says this. It says, if I could speak all the languages of earth and of angels, but didn't love others, I would only be noisy gong or clanging cymbal. It's pretty clear. If I had the gift of prophecy and I understood all of God's secret plans and possessed all the knowledge, and if I had such faith that I could move mountains but didn't love others, I would be nothing. I think when we read that, 1 Corinthians 13, 1 through 3, I think when we read that, we obviously can sit there and say, yeah, it doesn't matter if you know everything. It doesn't matter if you have all this faith. If you don't have love, then it's nothing. But I want to read in verse 3. If I gave everything I have to the poor and even sacrificed my body, I could boast about it. But if I didn't love others... I would have gained nothing. If I had if I gave I want to read that again. If I gave everything I have to the poor and even sacrificed my body, I could boast about it, but if I didn't love others, I would have gained nothing. See, a lot of times we want to take and we want to sit there and say, boy, using your spiritual gift, you better have love. You, you know, having faith, you better have love. We want to look at all the big things, but then they say, you know what? If you're giving, and we can talk about it in different ways. We can talk about giving monetarily to the church. We are so thankful for those that are helping keep us afloat during this time. We, we, you could talk about giving uh, the clothes off of your back. You could talk about giving excess items you have. You could talk about the things we, we all do, you know, because we love to do it. You know, buying somebody the, 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 the Dunkin' Donuts and get, getting in the line and buying them their coffee behind them. And we hear about all that and, and, and we see that. But if we do all of those things, but if we're not doing it with love... Mm -hmm. then what do we have? I, I love it. It even says that. It says, I could boast about it, meaning that I could get online and I could say I did this and I did that. And and listen, we are so blessed as a church. Um, we, we give to uh, missions. We've bought bags that go overseas. We've given to different groups. We've, we've blessed uh, been able to bless mission trips and people that went on missions trips and been able to help support them. This is all with, um, you know, church funds and we have uh, adopt a children and all those kind of things. And we, we've been blessed. So our whole mantra and our whole idea is we always want to, to be a giver. And I'm yes. feeling the Lord during this because I, I, I know he's blessed us from it. And that's not why we give. But we're not giving because we're saying, ooh, put us on the list and make sure our name is out there and everything else. Our giving was done and is done always in love. We love to see people 
reach what God wants them to do, whether it's somebody going on a missions trip for a first time or it's someone who uh, needs help uh, during a time period, or maybe they're down and, and they just need a hand up and a help up for a little bit. We love to do that, not because we get to boast about it, but because we do it with love. Mm -hmm. And when I read this scripture and I read it, it said, I gave everything I have to the poor. I mean, think about that. Wouldn't, I mean, if you gave everything you had to the poor, people would look at you and be like, wow, you're really awesome. But if you were doing it out of a heart of look at me or even out of a heart of sometimes I, I, not, not to say obedience, but saying, well, this is what I have to do to make sure people know that that I'm who I say I am. Are we really doing it for the right reason? And I'm going to show you where in the scriptures this kind of turns a little bit because we have the perfect example of how to give. Giving is done through love. And there's no two ways about it. I, I wrote this down today and I want to share it. Love makes giving line up with God's plan. And, and when I wrote that, I thought, wow, that, that does make sense to me. I hope it makes sense to you. <laughs> Everything kind of makes sense to me when I'm writing it. But um, love makes giving line up with God's plan. See, I can hear the word of God. I can hear God tell me this is what I need to do. I can obey God and do it, but it feels like when I'm doing it with a heart of love and not with a begrudging spirit, not with, oh gosh, I really need that, or what about me, or when is it my turn, or all of those things. Listen, we've been on both ends. I, you know, there there was a, um, there was definitely a time period in our lives where, uh, not to say we weren't receiving, but God was just having us be in the funneler. We, you know what I mean? We, we just, we just tried to bless everything that was out there. And then we've been to the point where we've been praying for blessings to show up at the door too, you know? So we, we've seen both sides of it. Um, and, and both sides are great. We've loved to give and love to receive. But when I, when I look at God's plan for my life and when I look at God's plan for our lives, not just me and my wife, not just our family, not just the church. I look at it and say, man, when we did the things that God told us to do and we did them with love in our hearts, it seemed like that lined up so much more than me saying, well, I'm doing this because God's making me do it. If that's, am I explaining that right? Mm -hmm. Are you getting what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Are you getting it down? Okay. All right. I just want to make sure. So, the, the scripture is very clear, and it, and it says it right there. It says, I gave everything to the, I have to the poor, even sacrificed my body. I could boast about it. But if I didn't love others, I would have gained nothing. I'm going to show you how giving has never been about us. It's never been about my pocket. It's never been about my time. It's never been about my gifts or my talents right? Because a lot of us give in our talents. We, we give uh, time to the church, extra time to the church right. for worship, for studying, whatever it may be. Um, some of you out there, and, and, and let, me, let me change that up a little bit, not just for the church as far as the building, but the capital C church. So not just the church building, but the capital C church. Many of you that are out there take time and you study and then you put stuff online, whether it's a video or whether it's, we have some, some amazing writers in our church. I mean, we have some wordsmiths in our church that are, are unbelievable. And they, they study the word. They hear from God. They take the time to go ahead and put pen to paper and write down what God has given them. And they share that. And believe it or not, that is very clearly giving of themselves. That's giving of something that God was working yeah, with yeah. them on. And that's giving that away to the capital C church, to the kingdom of God, to bless others. The, all of those things have never been about us, okay? 
And I pray every single day that, that all of you are blessed. I mean, I hope that, that some of our Connect family that write and do these things, I hope that they're blessed beyond measure. I hope that they're published. I hope that all of these things happen. I hope that every one of our musicians writes something and, and gets it out there and, and it's blessed beyond measure. I do. But when, when that happens, it will happen because we will realize that giving has never been about me. Okay? So I want to read this next portion of scriptures. 1 John 3, 16 through 19. I hope you're all still with me. We know what real love is because Jesus gave up his life for us. So we also ought to give up our lives for our brothers and our sisters. Wow, I could stop right there, right? Mm -hmm. I, I mean, if, if we're looking for the perfect example of giving, we do not have to go past the cross, right? We don't have to go past the cross. Right. Christ gave his life for us. That was a giving so we also ought to give up our lives for our brothers and sisters. 1 John 3, 16 through 19. Verse 17. If someone has enough money to live well and sees his brother or sister in need but shows no compassion, how can God's love be in that person? Dear children, let not, let's not merely say that we love each other. Let us show the truth by our actions. Our actions will show that we belong to the truth, so we will be confident when we stand before the Lord. I love that line. Our Amen. actions will show that we belong to the truth. Amen. Okay? If, if he is truth, right, and this way is truth, then for us to show that we belong to truth has to be an action. We, we cannot just sit there and say, well, the Lord has done so much for me. And now I'm done. I'm good to go. Yeah. There has to be a handout. I, I believe that in everything that we do, listen, giving of your time and giving even of your words to someone, that's giving, right? And you have to realize that I think every one of us have been in that place before. Every single one of us have been in a place where we needed to hear from God. And whether it was a person online, whether it was a pastor across the pulpit, whether it was somebody sitting down and saying, hang in there, you're going to get through this, God's going to help you through it. Whatever it may be, that little bit of transaction, that little bit of giving of your time and of your knowledge helped that person, helped me and you get to the next step, right? Uh, last week, I told you, just the, the simple invite for a burger made a world of change for my life and, and for your life, right? Because you're listening to me right now. And, and made, made a world of change for me. When was that? That was because it was done with love. Um, I, I wrote this just to make sure that giving should never be and was never about the giver. See, we, we, we get into that place where we have an item, right? And then we give it to a person. And so if we're not careful, we can feel like we possessed this. Do you see what I'm saying there on that? And that it was our thing to give to them. No, this is a blessing from God. Mm -hmm. This pen, that car, that house, that wallet, whatever it may be that you're giving away, we're possessing it because God has blessed us. That blessing that I am passing on is something that I'm passing on, not begrudgingly, not thinking I'll never get it back, not hoping that there's going to be this big return coming right. back to me, right. but I'm giving because I love you and I prefer you as my brother and my sister in Jesus Christ. But what happens from there? Then I have that same spirit, and I begin to love, and then I give to the next person. And it becomes, for everyone, the circle of life. I don't know if that's it, but it's the circle, right? I, I, I talked about this a, a while back. Um, I was in a service a while, many moons ago, many, many years ago, back when I... This is back in St. Cloud days. Many moons. Yeah, many moons. So um, back in St. Cloud days. 
And uh, I remember there was a gentleman there and he was talking about blessings. And he was talking about being a blesser and rejoicing with others mm -hmm. in their blessing. Yeah. And he was saying when someone receives, don't, gr don't be begrudging and don't be down and sit there and say, well, what about... What about me? I I come to church every single day, and why are they getting the promotion, and why are they getting the raise, and why are they getting, 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 getting? And what he said was, look at that person and rejoice with them, because they are your brothers and sisters in Christ. I mean, this is, if my brother called me up, my, my physical brother called me up, and told me that he that he got a brand new house or got a promotion at his job or something great that happened to him, I would rejoice with him. I would be happy for him. I, I, would, I wouldn't sit there and say, oh, he doesn't deserve it. What about me? I would be happy for him. We should be the same way in, the, in church. We should be the same way in this body of believers. We should be rejoicing when our brothers and sisters are doing well. We should be rejoicing. Why? Because giving has never been about me. It's never been about us. Even the receiving is not about me. Amen? It's about love. The giving and the receiving, the getting and the giving away, the holding on to, the letting go, the, the filling up the storehouses and the emptying it out has always been a lesson of love. And Jesus taught, us to, taught it to us. He taught it to us by giving his life. His life was the most precious and wonderful thing. It was spotless. It, he had no reason to give up his life. Mm -hmm. He was spotless, but yet he said he loved us so much that he would take on all of our mess, the reason that we should have been sacrificed, right? The reason that sacrifice should have happened. He took on all of that. Why? Out of love. And I, I want to read this. <laughs> Giving is not about you. It is you, right? It's for you. When, when you get to the heart of the matter, Galatians 1.4 says this. Thank you for hanging on with us. I'm hoping you're enjoying the word. I'm getting us in a place. Listen, you can give... You can give of your finances, you can give of your time, you can give of your studies, you can give of your gifting, mm -hmm. you can do all of that. But if you are not doing it out of love, then you're going to miss the mark, okay? So this is, this is me pastoring right now to everybody that's out there, whether, you're, whether I've pastored you before or not, I'm going to pastor you right now. When you write it, write it with joy. Yeah. When you give it, give it with joy. Give it with joy. Mm -hmm. when, when, it, when it leaves your hands, it should leave your hands with so much love that the other person receiving it yes. just I, I I I'm seeing this right now, like it's like oil, right? That love is like oil that when I'm handing something to someone, when I'm giving away of someone, when I'm speaking to someone and giving of my time, whatever that is, that when that is happening, that, that, that it's actually just dripping when that person receives it. And they're yeah. not just yeah. receiving an item. They're not just receiving uh, an answer to a prayer. They're not just receiving something temporary. Let's realize food is temporary, right? I can bless somebody with food. And that's temporary, mm -hmm. but it's not the food that's going to change their lives. It's the fact that somewhere in there, there was enough love that made it happen that now it becomes something that can grow and grow and grow in them. Listen, money is temporary. We're learning that right in this time. Money's temporary. Food is temporary. We're filling up our fridges left and right. We can't keep them stocked, right? All of those things are temporary, but love is not temporary. Mm -hmm. Love is something that continues. Mm -hmm. Listen, I, I, life is temporary, right? We're seeing that in this time. We're, we've, we've lost a lot of people recently. And we're realizing that life is temporary. 
And, and I've been dealing with a lot of that myself even um, recently. And I've realized that even though, I'm just for example, my father, even though his life was temporary and he's gone, the love mm -hmm. that was there still continues in me. His life may no longer be continuing. And his life is, there's, there, I can't call him up and, and speak to him. But guess what? The things that he gave in love to me throughout my life still grow and still speak. And those things still come to the surface when they need to. Galatians 1.4 says this. Jesus gave his life for our sins just as God our Father has promised or planned in order to rescue us from this evil world in which we live. Jesus gave his life for our sins. Why? To rescue us from the evil in this world that we live in. He didn't give his life so that we could just receive a story. He didn't give his life just so that we could receive something temporary he gave his life for our sins. Why? Because he loved us and he wanted to see us have a plan of escape. Well, well, here's the thing. He gave his life, the physical life was given over 2,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. But the great thing is this. Because it was given in love 2,000 years ago, there is still a reward for you and me now and in the future. There is still a reward for my children. That giving because it was done with love is still something that is going to, to benefit me when my time is done. When I take my last breath here and take my new breath in, in eternity, when I spend eternity with God, it is going to be because life was given uh, 2,000 years ago on a cross in love. Yeah. Amen? Amen. So I hope you're following what I'm putting down here. Amen? Or reading the tracks that I'm laying or whatever, however they say it. But I, I really felt like when I heard that today was Giving Tuesday, I could have easily, and somebody said it to me this morning, and then some other things just kind of played into line for it. I could have easily gotten on here and talked about what we could talk about. We could talk about how much blessings there are in giving. I, I, I will tell you right now, there is so much blessing in giving. There is so much blessing in giving. Don't ever give for the blessing. Mm. But I am a witness that there is blessing in giving, right? And you're a witness too, right? We can, we can say amen to that. I can, I can tell you countless testimony after testimony after testimony of people who have given and sown into the kingdom uh, financially, physically, time, all of those things, and they have given in, and they have been blessed and been taken care of. And, and whether you would sit there and say, well, wow, that's nothing. It didn't matter. It was exactly what they needed, mm -hmm. and it sustained them throughout. And we could have talked about that, but I wanted to talk about the fact that we have to get our hearts right. Our, ha our hearts have to be in the position because there is no use in giving something even as small as a pen to someone if you're not giving it in love. That's hard, right? Mm -hmm. Because have I, been, have I ever given out of abundance, right? I have a lot of pens. Here you go. Here's a pen, take it. But what if I give that pen because the person needs it and then later on they remember that pen. They remember our interaction. They remember me, whatever it may be. Everything that we're doing, everything that we're going to do in this upcoming year is going to be about love and giving through love. Our church this year is going to exceed anything we've ever done. Our serve day this year is going to be larger than it's ever been before. We are going to reach more lives than we ever have before. We are going to break boundaries. We are going to break walls that have been put up. Amen. We are going to reach our community. If other people want to argue and fight with their community and with their leaders, 
That's your prerogative. I am going to love and embrace our local leaders. We are going to give to them. We are going to help them. Listen, they have just as hard time every single day. They have a job to do. A lot of times their hands are tight. We are going to love them and we are going to continue to do what God has called us to do and that is give in love. And so I hope today you take today as the Giving Tuesday to go ahead and maybe bless somebody that's out there. You know, there might be somebody you know that needs something. There might be somebody that has been struggling with things. Um, There might be somebody that you know that's going through something and you want to reach out and buy them a book and hand it to them and, uh, you know, or send them a Dunkin' Donuts card because you haven't been able to get them, you know, get with them for coffee. I know I, I just saw in the spirit lane going, me, me, Yeah, yeah, me. yeah. <laughs> I, I know there's a lot of people on here who want some coffee, so we can get that to you. But I, I want you to, to really search your heart. And if you say, well, pastor, I just don't feel like I should be giving anything to anybody right now, then don't. Because I'd rather you hold on to it than you just give it because I'm telling you to give it. Right. We've got to get our hearts in the right position. And you know what? This is sometimes a very hard message for pastors to preach. Let's face it. We have a building. We have bills. We have things that come. We have, right? I mean, we have, we have things that happen and, and, and those things cost money. And so a lot of times... But I'm not. I'm telling you right now. Please hear my voice. Please, please, please hear me. Let's start giving out of the out of the Abundance. love that we have. Mm-hmm. Let it not just be I'm giving because I have five of them in my closet. Let us be giving because my heart is pressing me. My my love, the love that I have. I am showing people Christ through the giving that I do. It's not so that I can be glorified, but so that God can be glorified, right? Yeah. Giving has never been about us, church. It's never been about us. Christ showed us that on the cross. His giving of his life was never about him. Mm-hmm. That's hard to say right now. When Christ gave his life on the cross, it was never about him. It was always about us. Every step that he took, every persecution, every walk, every decision that made him get to that was not about him. It was not so that he could be the number one, you know, the the, the number one person in the best-selling book in the United States and in the world. That's not what it was about. His giving was about you and me. Mm -hmm. And if that was our example, then we ought to give of our lives for our brothers and our sisters. Amen? Amen. And that goes beyond giving financially. That means you're studying of your word. That means getting where God needs you to hear him so that you can speak to others and help others out of this pit in Jesus' name. Amen. Help me out here. You got anything else? It's beautiful, man. Good? We had a couple notes. I know we had some things. Um, As we're closing, we want to say this. Thank you again for for logging on with us. Um, I hope he's still on here. I think I saw him. It might be him or it might be Hazel. Um, Our pastor, Stu, uh, has been under the weather. We'll just call it under the weather. That's as easy as we say it. He's under the weather, but we are praying and we are believing that he is going to come out from under that weather here soon. Amen. Let um, the sun when we, S-O-N. when we <laughs> open up our doors, he will be there. Amen. In, Amen. Jesus, name. In Jesus name. And so we're praying for him. We're praying for uh, sister Hazel, that she would have strength during this time as well. Uh, we're continuing to pray for them. We've right also now. received some messages this week for people who are needing prayers for their marriages at this time, for people who have lost their jobs due to the coronavirus and the COVID-19. Um, and we just want to pray for you before we, we leave. Um, I was actually just sitting in the living room before we um, came online today, and the Lord dropped a song called, I Give Thanks to God When I Don't Have Enough, But He's More Than Enough. And um, He's more than enough to take care of every situation, every sickness, every every situation in your life, whether it's a job, whether it's your marriage, whether it's a healing in your body, he is more than enough yes. to take care of those situations in your life. Yes. Amen. And I believe we'll, we'll put that song up after this. Um, 
Haha. <laughs> Hebrews 12, 2 from our bishop. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Mm. Hallelujah. Good word, Amen. Bishop. Good. Thank you. So let's pray as we close here right now. We're going to pray for Pastor Stu. We're going to pray for marriages. We're going to pray for jobs. all of it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pray for those checks to hit wherever they need to hit. Um, for all of those unemployment we offers that are out there yet. that are that are waiting for it. We're going to start praying for those right now. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you, Jesus, right now we come before you as a family, as a body of believers, Lord, as your children. And we come to you right now and we pray for every single person that's on right now, every single person that's going to watch this. Lord, that you would begin to open up the heavens and rain down exactly what we need during this time. Lord, there are healings that are needed right now. There are restoration to marriages right now, Lord. Yes, there are yes, jobs yes, and answers Jesus. to jobs yes, right now. Lord, for those that are waiting to receive answers, that have applied for things, that are waiting right now, Lord. Lord, I ask, I declare, Lord Jesus, right now, Amen. that this week things would start to move and things would start to shift. Lord, that emails would start to come. Yes, answers Jesus. would start to yes, come. Lord. Lord, for those of you that have been checking your email every single day, you've been checking your mail every single day, you've been listening for the mailman to show up, hoping that something was there. Right now, I'm declaring that those things would start to break free, Amen. that whatever Amen. the enemy has held up, that whatever delay has been yes. happening yes. right now, right that now, it would Jesus. be broken Amen. and that it would start to be delivered and be received. Lord, I thank you right now. I, Lord, I thank you right now for the testimonies. I thank you for the text coming. I thank you for the phone calls yes. that are coming. Yes. I thank you for the people that are reaching out to us to Hallelujah, say, Pastor, Jesus. you prayed it and it happened. Yes, Hallelujah. Amen. We are a church that believes. We are a church yes, that have seen yes, miracles yes, and wonders. Yes, and Lord, Lord, we are not going to stop now. It doesn't matter if we're at home and thank by you, ourselves, if you. we're separated from our body. Together, Lord, we still stand on your word and we we know that you can deliver and we believe, believe it. it. Lord, you are faithful to your promises. Yes. Your word says you are faithful to your promises. Right now, we pray for deliverance amen. in Jesus' in name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, yes. Woo -woo. Man, I don't know what Thursday night prayer is going to be, but I'm all fired up. Amen. I'm all juiced up. Share, share, share. Let get as many people as we can on on thursday night that we're all praying together in unity as one body yes. one mind and one accord and um let's pray together Amen. yep thursday night we're going to come on we're going to attack in prayer we're going to have a good time um i'm hoping to have somebody uh on with us and so we're going to have some time in prayer and we're just going to reach out to the throne room of god we love you we appreciate you we cannot thank you enough we will see you soon bye bye Oh, uh, adios. Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> whoop, whoop.